to today's edition of Search the Scriptures. We are on Hebrews, in the book of Hebrews. We are on our 12th study in the book of Hebrews. And this study covers Hebrews chapter number 9, verses 15 through 28. So if you want to get a Bible out, then we'll read along together in uh, just a moment. We're going to attempt to answer two sets of questions from Hebrews chapter 9, verses 15 through 28. Uh, the first one comes from verses 15 through verse 25 and ask the questions, what are the reasons why Christ's death was necessary? And of what benefits can we be sure because it has occurred? And then from verses 24 through 28, what differences are indicated here between what the Jewish high priest did and what Christ has done? And what are the consequences of Christ's once sacrifice of himself? And how could it affect what happens to us when this life is over? So, if you have your Bible, get it out and turn to Hebrews chapter 9, verses 15 through 28. If not, uh, it will be on the screen. And let's begin with the 15th verse. For this reason, Christ is the mediator of a new covenant, that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance, now that he has died as a ransom to set them free from the sins committed under the first covenant. In the case of a will, it's necessary to prove the death of the one who made it, because a will is in force only when somebody has died. It never takes effect while the one who made it is still living. This is why even the first covenant was not put into effect without blood. When Moses had proclaimed every commandment of the law to all the people, he took the blood of calves together with water, scarlet wool, and branches of hyssop, and he sprinkled the scroll and all the people. He said, This is the blood of the covenant which God has made, has commanded you to keep. In the same way, he sprinkled with the blood both the tabernacle and everything used in its ceremonies. In fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood, and without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness. And it was necessary then for the copies of the heavenly things to be purified with these sacrifices, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ did not enter a man-made sanctuary that was only a copy of the true one. He entered heaven itself, now to appear for us in God's presence. Nor did he enter heaven to offer himself again and again, the way the high priest enters the most holy place every year, with blood that is not his own. Then Christ would have had to suffer many times since the creation of the world. But now he has appeared once for all at the end of the ages to do away with sin by the sacrifice of himself. Just as man is destined to die once and after that to face judgment, so Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many people. And he will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. Let's look at those questions one at a time. From verses 15 through 25, what are the reasons why Christ's death was necessary? And of what benefits can we be sure because it has occurred? Well, Christ had to die in order for believers to receive eternal inheritance. Without a death, there can be no inheritance. And as a result of his death, the problem of sin has been overcome once and for all. From verses 24 through 28, what differences are indicated here between what the Jewish high priest did and what Christ has done? And what are the consequences of Christ's once sacrifice of himself? And how can it affect what happens to us when this life is over? Well, the Jewish high priest sprinkled blood on the earthly tabernacle. But that was just a mere shadow of the heavenly one. And he could only, the high priest, could only enter the most holy place, or the holy of holies, once a year. And whenever he entered into it, he had to enter in every year. And every time he entered, he had to bring blood for himself and for the sins of the people. Christ only had to enter once, and will never need to enter again. He did not enter into a shadow of the heavenly place, but he entered into the heavenly place itself. And the word says that he sat down there. He's not going out and in, out and in, out and in every year. But he sat down. He's done. And as a result of this once and for all sacrifice of our, uh, for our all all sacrifice for our sins, uh, they've been forever removed and promising us salvation at the coming of the Lord. And he's seated at the right hand of the Father, waiting that moment when the Father says, Go and get my church. I hope this study has been a blessing to you. I uh, hope you're having a wonderful day. hope the rest of your day goes even better uh, than your day's been going so far. 
Uh, we'll see you again tomorrow for our next study. God bless. Thank you.